Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called One Step Equations with Multiplication and Division Word Problems. This is again part one. So what we have here is a, a series of word problems. We'll read the problem, try to understand what it's asking us, and then we're going to write an equation to solve it, right? And then of course, so part of the solution is to write the equation down that makes sense for the problem, and then use what we have learned to solve the equation and figure out the answer. Now I know that a lot of these problems, some of them, maybe not all of them, but some of them, you probably can do in your head uh, because these are not like super complicated problems. But even if you find that you can do them in your head, that's that's okay, but you still have to be in the habit of writing down the equation and solving it the way I'm, I'm doing it here. Because the point of it really isn't that these problems are, are hard. The point of it is to learn how to write equations and solve them. Because very soon we'll get to problems that are much too hard to solve in our head. So we have to learn this skill. So problem number one, it says, after biking around the lake three times, Anthony's GPS says he's gone a total of six miles. How far is it around the lake one time? Write down an equation and use it to solve for the answer. So when we t tackle these problems, just like in regular word problems, the very first thing you should do is just zero in on the question, on the sentence is what it's asking you for. So it says right here in the second sentence, uh, how far is it around the lake one time? So there's a lake and there's a path around it. And the question literally is saying, how far, what is the distance? And in this question, we're talking about miles, but it could be kilometers or light years or whatever. But here we're talking about miles and the question says, how far is it around the lake one time? So we have to come up with some variable name to represent that because that's what we're gonna solve for. All right, so you can use L for lake if you want. You could use P for path. You could use anything you want. I'm going to use M for miles because it's that many miles around the lake. So I'm going to use the letter M and M is going to represent how many miles around that lake. So if we think about it logically, we know that we have some variable M. It's the unknown, so I'm gonna put a, a, a letter in place of what I'm trying to solve for. I don't know how long the thing is, but the problem says, after biking around the lake three times, three times, what does that mean? Three times the length around that lake, 3M, right? The GPS says he's gone a total of six miles. This is how we translate an equation. The problem says he goes three times around the lake. This M means the distance around the lake. So three times the distance around the lake has to equal six miles, right? So now we have an equation to solve. 3M is equal to six. What is happening? Right here is we're multiplying by three. We wanna get rid of that by dividing by three, right? That's what we always wanna do. And we know that we have a three on the top and a three on the bottom. They're dividing away and so they're canceling. And the only thing that I have left on the left-hand side is just M. On the right, six divided by three is two. So what does this mean? The lake, uh, I'll just say it like this, two miles around the lake, that's what that basically means. Two miles around the lake one time, right? And if you think about it, I'll just circle that. If you think about it, if it, it actually does take two miles to go around that lake, right? I guess I'll put miles right here. Then if it's two miles here, then if you go three times around, three times two is six. So we know the equation is correct, but not only is it correct, it makes sense. Uh, that's what we wanna basically do. Now again, you could probably solve this without an equation. I know that, but that's not the point. The point is I give you a problem in a minute a little bit later, that's too complicated to solve in your head. We have to get practice writing equations. That's how we make progress with anything more complicated in the future. Problem number two is, is Jackie split the household chores evenly among her four children. And each child had three chores to complete. How many total household chores were there? And it says write an equation and use it to solve the problem. Again, first, zero in on the question right there. Second sentence, how many total chores were there? all together. The kids are splitting the chores, but it's asking us how many all together were there, right? You can use whatever you want, A, B, C, X, whatever. I'm going to use the variable C for chores. This is the total number of chores in the house that have to be completed. It says they're divided ev evenly among four people. So however many chores we have, if we divide them evenly among four people, then what are we going to get? It says each child has three to complete. So C over four is equal to three. So if I had 25 chores to complete, let's say, and then four people, I would divide by four, and then that would be how many everybody has to complete. In this case, it's telling us however many there are divided by four kids means everybody does three chores. That's what that means. So let's write the equation again. 
right? On the left-hand side, we are doing division. So we have to undo with multiplication. So we'll multiply by four and multiply by four, and we'll write this as a fraction. And then we see right away what we always see, that we have a four in the top and a four in the bottom. We can cancel those as we've been doing. And on the left-hand side, all we are left with is C, and on the right-hand side, three times four is 12. So the answer is 12 total chores. Let's see if this makes sense, right? If there are 12 total chores, we put it in here. If we divide it among four children, then 12 divided by four is three, and that means each person does three chores. That's exactly what the board says, and that's also exactly what the problem statement says. So we know it matches, we know it makes sense, all right? Problem number three, it says Connor must buy 35, a 35 pound bag of dog food for his dog every five weeks. How many pounds of food does, he, does his dog eat every week or each week? Write an equation, use it to solve the problem. So again, we're going to zero in on the question mark, the sentence two, how many pounds of dog food does his dog eat it each week? How many pounds of food does he eat it each week? So I'm gonna use P for pounds of food. You can use D for dog food or X or Y or whatever. I'm gonna use P. P is representing how many pounds this dog eats every week because it says, how many pounds does he eat each week? I wanna solve for that, so I'm creating a variable. This is how many pounds every week. And then it says, uh, he, uh, how many, uh, he must buy 35 pound uh, bag of dog food for his dog every five weeks. So if we know how many pounds he's eating per week and we multiply that by five over five weeks, then we're saying it's equal to 35 pounds. That's what we're saying. So over a five week period, five times the amount of food he's eating every week, right? Week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, we multiply it out. That's gonna be the total number of pounds he eats. And it says that that's equal to 35 pounds. So let's rewrite the equation and solve. On the left-hand side, we have multiplication going on, right? We have to do the opposite, which is division. We do it to both sides, which is division. And then of course we see that the five on the top divides away or cancels with the five on the bottom. All we are left with on the left is just P. 35 divided by five is seven. And so what does this mean? He eats seven pounds of food each week. Now let's see if this actually makes sense. If he eats seven pounds of food each week, then we would put seven into here. Seven each week, if I multiply by five, would mean 35 pounds total over five weeks. So that's why he has to buy a 35 pound bag of dog food. Every five weeks, he has to buy that every five weeks. All right, we only have two more problems. Let's take a look. Next problem says, at the end of a shift, six baristas split the money from a tip jar and each take uh, a home $9 from the tip jar. How much money was in the tip jar? Write an equation, use it to solve the problem. Now, a barista, somebody that makes coffee in a coffee shop, that's what that is. So the question, zero in on that first. How much money was in the tip jar? We have to come up with a variable for that, you could use M for money, that would be fine, or X or Y or A. I'm going to use T for tips because it's the tip jar, right? You can use whatever letter you want. So I'm gonna say T, this represents how much money is in this tip jar at the end of the day, or at the end of the shift. But it says that six people are splitting this. So however much money is in there, we're gonna divide it six ways. And then after we do that, they each get $9. So we take the total amount of money divided by six, everybody gets $9. So let's rewrite the equation and solve it. T over six equals nine. So we're dividing by six here. We have to do the opposite then, multiply by six. Do the opposite, multiply by six. So what do we have, a six on the top? Well, first of all, we'll just make sure you know that that's like six over one. The six on the top and the six on the bottom cancel. All we have left is T divided by one. The one does nothing, so it's just T on the left. Nine times six, 54. So what does this mean? It's 54, what is T? T represented the total amount of money in the tip jar. So it was the total amount, $54 total in jar. That's what that means. So let's see if it makes sense. If there really was $54 in the tip jar, 54 would go here, we would divide it six ways. 54 divided by six is nine, everybody would get $9. Because that's what we do when we wanna divide something uh, like a tip jar, we divide it evenly, and that's how much money everybody gets. Last problem, it says, Callie watched seven episodes of her favorite cartoon in 70 minutes. 
How long is each episode? Write an equation, use it to solve the problem. Zero in on the question, how long is each episode? So they want the time, right? How long in minutes, right? So we can use T for time if you want. You could use X or Y or A. You can use E for episodes. I'm gonna do it that way, but you can use something else if you'd like, use any, no, any uh, letter that you'd like. I'm going to say E for episode. This is the length of an episode because it says how long is an episode. So E is going to represent the length of an episode. Now it says that she watches seven of these things. So if this is the length of one episode, if she watches seven of these cartoons and you multiply the, the length of one of them times seven and the total length of that is 70 minutes. So make sure you understand each episode is unknown, but this is what it means. If we multiply it by seven, the answer must be 70 minutes because that's what the problem says. So we'll rewrite it. And then we will, since we're multiplying by seven, we'll divide by seven, we'll divide by seven. And then what's going to happen is on the left, the sevens will cancel. And all I'm going to have left is E and then 70 divided by seven is 10. What does E represent? That's the length of time for one episode. 10 what? Because the problem is in, is in minutes because it says 70 minutes. So this is in the same unit, 10 minutes per episode. Right? 10 minutes per episode. Let's check and see if it's right. If each episode's 10 minutes, then if you watch seven of them, then 10 times seven is 70, and that's what the problem says. So in each of these cases, we take the time to read the problem, and then we take the time to understand what the problem is saying. We zero in on the question. We create a variable that answers the question, and we write it down, and then we formulate what has to go around the variable in order to make sense of the problem, to, to represent what the problem says, then we solve it. That is what we're doing here. That's the skill we're practicing. I know the problems are simpler. I know that you could probably figure this out without an equation, but very soon I'm giving you equations you can't solve in your head. So we have to learn how to do this translation. It's really, really important. So I'd like you to solve all of these yourself. Follow me on the part two. We'll get a little more practice with word problems with multiplication and division and single step equations.